Hare Krishna everyone, dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in Hive, the live studios, just just near the English Channel in Kent, uh, southeast England. Uh, we hope that you're well and safe and happy in all respects. Uh, we're going to get right into it because we're a little late today. We had a long uh, proof hearing session. I'm getting back into the proof hearing again, which is a very big relief. And we did about oh, four and a half, five hours today. And uh, it's good. It's really good. It's going to be a good audiobook. <clears throat> Srimad Bhagavata Mahi Mahima Stotra, a five verse stotra glorifying the Srimad Bhagavatam by Srila Sanatan Goswami to set everything in the proper mood. It goes like this. Sarva shastabdi piyusha Sarva vedaika satpala Sarva siddhanta ratnaja Sarva lokaika drikprada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures singular fruit of all the Vedas rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dwanduritta Aditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali, you are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshakshadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you who were supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna himself. Madeka Bando Matsangin Madguro Man Mahadana my only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu ta dayin adini chochatakara hanamun chagadachin mam Premna rit kantayospuda. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So by the strength of his mantra, the mercy of his spiritual master, who happens to be Krishna himself, very special situation, Gopakumara has arrived at the uh, abode of liberation, Mahakalapur, after passing through the different coverings of the universe. Uh, and just as he arrives, not long after he arrives, after he has seen uh, Mala, uh, Mahakala, the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the Brahma Jyoti, he all of a sudden heard something. And that's where we, la that's where we are. He heard some wonderful singing and music we're writing. We're starting from text forty-nine, chapter three, Briya Bhagavatamrita, part two. Enlivened, looking all around, I saw someone riding on a bull, a unique person, arriving from a higher region. Text fifty, three-eyed, white like camphor, dressed only by the sky that exquisitely beautiful person carrying a trident and bore carried a trident and bore the half moon on his head 
his matted locks brilliantly adorned by the Ganga. His body was smeared with ashes and graced by a charming garland of bones. Commentary Lord Shiva's garland of bones was in fact auspicious and beautiful because it was made from the bones of departed Vaishnavas. Text 51 Sitting on his lap, a woman of fair complexion affectionately served him. Divine regalia surrounded him more heavenly than the riches of heaven and many followers attended him their attractive forms and conduct just befitting his service. Commentary Upon, upon first seeing him Gopakumar was unaware of, Lord, of who Lord Shiva was and so describes him as come api, someone. And, and although Gopakumar knew nothing about Lord Shiva's transcendental relationship with his wife, he describes her as Gori, since she, he could see with his own eyes her beautiful golden complexion. At first sight, Gopakumar could recognize that the royal umbrella, chamara fans, and other personal accoutrements of Lord Shiva were more excellent than those of the demigods and suitably exalted attendants with great devotion carried that umbrella, fanned Lord Shiva with the Chamaras and performed other services for him and his consort. The associates of Lord Shiva appeared very handsome, including Sri Ganesh with his large abdomen and elephant's head, and they all conducted themselves in an attractive manner. By worship of Ganesh, or other demigods, one may attain a form with, for example, a protuberant belly and an elephant's head. But those who worship Lord Shiva, understanding that he is non-different from Sri Krishna, attain beautiful bodily forms on Lord Shiva's planet. This is affirmed in the narration of Lord Shiva's battle with Andaka in Sri Vamana Purana, chapter 59. Text 52 Feeling the greatest surprise and delight, I thought, who is this? Accompanied by such an entourage and appearing from above the abode of liberation. Text 53 He looks more powerful than anyone in the material world, more excellent than all liberated souls, yet he seems to violate the rules of civilized behavior like a great sense gratifier. Commentary It struck Gopakumar as strange that even though this unique person appeared to be the supreme ruler of the material world, the defender of religious principles, he was ignoring the rules of proper behavior by traveling naked, embracing his wife in public, and so on, enjoying all kinds of sense gratification, even though he seemed a fully liberated transcendentalist. Text 54 <clears throat> My mind was overcome by the weight of the supreme ecstasy I felt from seeing him. I bowed down to him and those who were with him and he gave me a compassionate glance. Text 55 Impelled by joy I approached the leader of his companions named Sri Nandishwar and asked him in detail about this person and what he was doing. Comment, commentary Although unfamiliar with Lord Shiva, Gopakumar asked Sri Nandeshwar, Who is this? Oh, altogether, excuse me, altogether unfamiliar with Lord Shiva, Gopakumar asked uh, Sri Nandeshwar, Who is this? Where is his residence? Where is he going now? Text 56. Nandishwar laughed and said to me, O cowherd boy, devoted worshipper of Gopal, don't you recognize Lord Shiva, the Lord of the universe? Commentary. Nandishwar found it amusing that a devotee of Lord Gopal could be ignorant of the identity of Lord Shiva. But since Gopakumar was a simple cowherd boy, Nandishwar thought he might be so poorly informed. By calling Lord Shiva the Lord of the Universe, 
Nandishwar tactfully told Gopakumar that since Lord Shiva is independent, he can apparently violate the laws of civilized behavior without blame. Text 57 He is the giver of material enjoyment and liberation, and he expands devotion to the personality of Godhead. He is worshipped even by the liberated and is dear to the Vaishnavas. Commentary Lord Shiva is Bhagavad Bhakti Vardhana in more than one sense by showing a loving attitude toward the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Lord Shiva increases the Supreme Lord's reciprocal love for him. And apart from this, Lord Shiva is himself a great Lord, Bhagavan, who promotes the process of devotional service to Vishnu. He teaches his own devotees that Bhagavad Bhakti is the supreme goal of life, greater than all others. The essential meaning of Lord Shiva's being, Bhagavad Bhakti Bardhana, is that by his very words and behavior, he increases for the inhabitants of the universe their devotion for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And, he, and so he is very dear to the devotees of Vish, Lord Vishnu who aspire for his association. <clears throat> 58 and 59 Drawn by the devotion of his friend Kuvera, he is traveling with his beloved Parvati and dear gentle companions to grace Mount Kailas with his presence. He came from his own planet, as transcendental as he, an abode reached through devotion by those who see him as Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna as non-different. Commentary Here Nandishwara explains where Lord Shiva comes from and where he is going. Lord Shiva's own planet, beyond the coverings of the material universe, is attainable by those who worship him and Lord Vishnu on the same level. That transcendental world is suitable for Lord Shiva's pleasure, equipped as it is with all kinds of eternal and unlimited opulence. Yet, Lord Shiva gracefully accepts the friendship of the demigod Kuvera, the original proprietor of Mount Kailas, and submits himself to, Kuvera, to Kuvera's devotion. And so Lord Shiva is on his way to visit Kailas in the company of Parvati, his consort. Since Parvati, the mother of the universe, is Lord Shiva's supreme energy, Gopukumar should not be shocked to see her sitting on his lap in public. But why is Lord Shiva traveling with such a small entourage? Although on his own planet he has more, many more devotees, for this trip he has chosen only his dearmost associates, because the kailas within the material world cannot can accommodate only some of his opulence and entourage. Text 60 mm. Sri Gopakumar said, Delighted to hear this, I was eager to obtain Lord Shiva's grace and fulfill a long-cherished desire. Commentary Gopakumar was eager to understand how Lord Shiva is non-different from Sri Madan Gopal Dev. Although Gopakumar's natural inclination was toward the lotus feet of Madan Gopal, he also found himself unavoidably attracted to the amazing, this amazing person, Lord Shiva, whom he was seeing for the first time. Gopakumar would be grateful if Lord Shiva were to enlighten him about how Lord Shiva and Lord Krishna are non-different. Text 61 Lord Shiva, reading my thoughts, ordered Nandishwar with a knowing glance, and through Nandishwar's pure guidance, the facts easily revealed themselves to me. Commentary Lord Shiva, the best of mystics, knew at once what Gopakumar was thinking and simply by glancing at Nandishwara conveyed his desire that Nandishwara explain the matter. 
Srila Sanatana Goswami says in his commentary to this verse that Nandina can refer to Nandishwara, the principal attendant of Lord Shiva, or, or else to the bull Nandi, Lord Shiva's carrier, who was born from a partial expansion of the Supreme Lord. Text 62 This Lord Shiva, I realized, is non different from Madan Gopal, the deity I worship, the Lord more dear to me than life itself. Lord Shiva serves the cause of love for my Lord by promoting it everywhere. Commentary There is nothing wrong with being attracted to Lord Shiva, since he is non different from Lord Krishna. Devotion offered to him is also devotion to Krishna. More precisely, when one satisfies Lord Shiva by pure devotion to him, Lord Shiva helps one become more devoted to Krishna. Text 63 I happily entered among Lord Shiva's companions and was treated with affection by all his devotees. From Sri Nandishwara, I heard these, these unique facts. 64 The great Lord Shiva has one eternal transcendental form. Dwelling in his own abode, he is always visible to his exclusive worshippers who are pleased to live there. Commentary According to Sri Nandishwar, Lord Shiva remains always in one form, meaning that he is not like Lord Mahakala, sometimes formless and sometimes having a personal form, nor does he expand himself as Lord Vishnu does into the different forms of a fish, a tortoise, and so on. In the pastimes Lord Shiva performs for the pleasure of his devotees, he sometimes appears disguised as a hunter or a fisherman, but he, is, but he does not transform into different species of life. Because Lord Shiva's followers can rest assured he is not going to change his appearance, they are always satisfied. He is always visible on his planet, not like Lord Vishnu, who often leaves his abodes to visit other places. Lord Shiva's dear devotees can always see their Lord, unlike the devotees of Lord Vishnu, Sri Yogyeshwar, and the other incarnations of the Personality of Godhead on Swargaloka, Maharloka, Tapoloka, and Satyaloka. This is the explanation given by Sri Nandishwar. But more precisely, Lord Shiva is always in the same form, in the sense that his body is always purely spiritual, Satchidananda, and never subject to change. He is always present in his own abode, beyond the material creation, and so is visible in that abode for the pleasure of his devotees. Text 65 With festivals of singing, dancing, and so on, he always gives pleasure to his companions, as if to make them greedy for the Supreme Lord's devotional service, in which they see that he and Lord Vishnu are non-different. <clears throat> Commentary Commentary. <clears throat> Lord Shiva's festivals <clears throat> resound with congregational chanting of Lord Vishnu's names, and his devotees can be heard crying out in great reverence and love for Lord Shiva. I mean Lord Vishnu, sorry. <clears throat> I'll read that again. <clears throat> Lord Shiva's festivals resound with congregational chanting of Lord Vishnu's names and his devotees can be heard crying out in great reverence and love for Lord Vishnu. It appears that Lord Shiva holds such festivals for the benefit of others, to induce them to take up worship of Lord Vishnu as non-different from himself. But in fact, Lord Shiva is himself fully absorbed in Vishnu Bhakti, 
because like Narada Muni, he is a bhakta avatar, an empowered incarnation of the Lord in the Lord in the role of the Lord's devotee. Text sixty six. Although he is the Lord of the universe, he always lovingly worships his favorite form of the Supreme Lord, Shesha. He, ha- he of a-, a thousand faces, as if a humble servant. Commentary Lord Shiva feels a special affinity with the Ananta Shesha expansion of Lord Sankarshan because both Lord Shiva and Shesha are presiding lords of the mode of ignorance. This is depicted in the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam 5.17.16 in the account of how Lord Vishnu is worshipped on Ilavritavarsh. In Ilavritavarsh, Lord Shiva is always encircled by ten billion maidservants of Goddess Durga who minister to him. The quadruple expansion of the Supreme Lord consists of Vasudeva, Prajumna, Aniruddha, and Sankarsana. Sankarsana, the fourth expansion, is certainly transcendental, but because his activities of destruction in the material world are in the mode of ignorance, he is, blo- he is known as Tamasi, the Lord's form in the mode of ignorance. Lord Shiva, knowing that the original cause of his own existence is Lord Sankarshan, always meditates upon Lord Sankarshan in trance by chanting the following mantra. As stated by Lord Shiva in his prayers in the fifth canto, the manifestation of Lord Sankarshan as an antashesha has thousands of hoods, and so this form is different in appearance from the form of Lord Shankarshan, worshipped in the covering shell of Ahankara, false ego. In Lord Shiva's abode, the region of Ahankara, Lord Sankarshan has four arms, like Sri Purjumna and Aniruddha. Lord Shiva's abode is thus a very special place. Lord six, uh, text 67 Learning about this unique excellence of Shiva Loka, I felt exceedingly happy, yet my heart, I knew, was not full. Commentary Hearing all this made Gopakumar's, Gopakumar eager to see Shiva Loka. Shiva Loka, but his persistent desire to find Sri Madan Gopal constrained him. Text 68 I couldn't discern the cause of that feeling, but by the mercy of my divine spiritual master, I had received the transcendental mantra, and by the power of my service to the mantra, after some reflection, I quickly understood. Commentary By virtue of constantly meditating with full sincerity on the ten-syllable Gopal mantra, Gopal Kumar could understand in a moment, the essence of his predicament. Text 69 I was disturbed because of forgetting the lotus feet of Sriman, Madan Gopal, and his pastimes and other attractive features. In this circumstance, Gopal, go, commentary, in this circumstance, Gopal Kumar was unable to focus his mind on Sri Madan Gopal's pastimes, beauty, sweetness, and compassion. Text 70 I told my mind that it is Lord Shiva himself who performs these wonderfully varied pastimes in the form of Lord Gopal. Text 71 But seeing my mind still unsettled, I told it, if you fail to perceive something in Lord Shiva, it must be the rare sweetness of Gopal's beauty and his other such qualities. Text 72 Nonetheless, by Lord Shiva's mercy, your long-held desire will soon be fulfilled. By his special favor toward you, be assured this will be so. 
Text 73. My mind was thus appeased, and I was happy to stay a while by the side of Lord Shiva, who for some reason chose to take rest before going on with his journey. Commentary Why Lord Shiva rested in Mahakalapur before proceeding to Kailas is disclosed in the next verses. Text 74 Just then, my lord, I heard from a distance the extremely sweet melodies of the singing of great souls. Commentary Gopakumar calls his disciple Bhagavan showing deep respect because the disciple is a mature brahmana and is now blessed with the supreme good fortune of being engaged in the worship of Lord Madan Gopal. Text 75 Hearing that sound, Lord Shiva was swept away in an ocean of great ecstasy. Under the spell of intense love of God, he began to dance alone. Commentary Whatever this sound was, it at once caused transcendental symptoms in the body of Lord Shiva, symptoms of profound transformations in his mind, trembling, perspiration, choking of the voice, standing of the bodily hair on end, falling to the ground, and more. These appeared spontaneously, beyond his conscious control. He then started to dance, though no one around him was dancing. Text 76 His most faithful wife, Devi, and his companions, headed by Nandishwar, added to the enthusiasm of their Lord by playing music, chanting the Supreme Lord's names, and so on. Commentary Far from resenting her husband's losing his composure, the goddess Parvati, the most faithful of chaste wives, encouraged him, following his lead, even while still sitting on his lap before he stood up to dance, she began to accompany him with music. Text 77 Then, suddenly, I saw a group of attractive, four-armed persons arrive, adorned with all the opulences of youth, charm, beauty, and good fortune. Commentary Some of the attendants who sang at Lord Shiva's side as he danced had four arms also, but the newly arrived four-armed persons were exceptionally beautiful. Text 78 Their limbs so effulgent as to decorate their very ornaments and make the Shaivites seem invisible. <laughs> These four-armed persons were immersed in the blissful rasa of singing the sublime glories of their Lord. Text 79 All their ornaments and accoutrements were beautiful beyond words, and in the company of those persons were the four brothers I had seen before, led by Sanaka. Commentary Although Sanaka and his brothers reside on Tapuloka, where Gopakumar had met them before, they are as exalted as residents of Brahmaloka and regions even higher because they are empowered incarnations of the Supreme Lord. Text 80 So attracted was my mind by the spontaneous joy of seeing them that I was aware of nothing but them, internally or externally, not even things most dear to me. Text 81 After a moment, I came, came back to normal consciousness, but oh, I couldn't bring myself to ask them to make me their servant. I felt too afraid and embarrassed to ask such an unlikely, unlikely blessing, even silently within my mind. Commentary Gopakumar thought it would, be, it would be offensive to such an, for such an insignificant person as he to ask for the exalted position of a servant of the Vaikuntha messengers, 
so he couldn't summon the courage to submit his request. Text 82 and 83. Simply by embracing them, Lord Shiva could suddenly go into a swoon of prema, and in my wretchedness a certain longing troubled me, a longing that just once, by the mercy of Lord Shiva, these persons might somehow talk to me, or on some pretext might save me by the mercy of their sidelong glance. Commentary Gopakumar thought that only the mercy of these wonderful persons could save him from dying untimely, out of frustration. Without even knowing who they were and from where they had come, he was convinced they were great souls. Text 84 The goddess Uma, who always acts in accord with Lord Shiva's heart, understood what I was thinking. She then had Ganesh gently address me. Commentary Ganesh spoke to Gopakumar in a quiet voice because what he was about to say was too confidential for all the companions of Lord Shiva to hear. Lord Shiva's consort, Parvati, or Uma, always present in her husband's heart, acts only with his sanction. Text 85 Sri Ganesh said, These are the associates of the ruler of Vaikuntha, the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. They have attained bodily forms similar to his and have come here from Vaikuntha itself. Commentary Here the word kila means certainly this is true. You should not doubt that they have come from the spiritual world. Text 86 and 87 <clears throat> Just see these other Vaikuntha companions of the Lord traveling in this small universe ruled by four-headed Brahma and further away by those others moving swiftly in the universe of an eight-headed Brahma, a world twice as large, and those others in the world of a Brahma with sixteen heads, a world twice as large again. Commentary To show that these visitors from Vaikuntha were indeed extraordinary, Sri Ganesh pointed out more of them entering the other side of the universe, a great distance away, on some other mission. And beyond this relatively small universe of four-headed Brahma, still other Vaikuntha messengers were visiting the world of an eight-headed Brahma, which was one billion yojanas in diameter, twice as big as this one. They were traveling swiftly, Vegata, because that universe is so large, Ganesh further, because that universe is so large, Ganesh further showed the same thing happening in universes still larger. Text 88 and 89. In this way, Ganesh showed me many Vaikuntha companions of the Lord traveling with ease in the millions and billions of universes of multitudes of huge Brahmas who had millions and billions of lotus faces. The Vaikuntha devotees attracted to the eyes and mind all had suitable bodies and were suitably equipped for the universes they were visiting. Commentary One after another Ganesh pointed out messengers from Vaikuntha in the universes of a Brahma with 32 heads 64 heads, 128 heads, and so on. Gopakumar could perceive no end to these countless universes. That there are, in fact, material universes beyond counting is stated in scriptures such as Srimad Bhagavatam. What am I, a small creature, measuring seven spans of my own hand? I am enclosed 
and a pot-like universe composed of material nature, the total material energy, false ego, ether, air, water, and earth. And what is your glory? Unlimited universes pa pass through the pores of your body, just as particles of dust pass through the openings of a screened window. window. Bhagavatam 10, 14, 11. Because you are unlimited, neither the Lord of Heaven nor even you yourself can ever reach the end of your glories. The countless universes, each enveloped in its shell, are compelled by the wheel of time to wander within you like particles of dust blowing about in the sky. And the Shrutis, following their method of eliminating everything separate from the Supreme, become successful by revealing you as their final conclusion. Bhagavatam 10, 87, 41 Every universe is covered by seven layers earth, water, fire, air, sky, the total energy and false ego each ten times greater than the one previous. Besides our universe there are innumerable others and although unlimitedly large they move about like atoms in you. Therefore you are called unlimited Ananta. Bhagavatam 6, 16, 37 Gopa Kumar could easily see into all the material universes from where he stood in the abode of liberation because that realm is free from the covering of material energy. In each universe, he saw the Vaikuntha messengers had assumed forms with a different size and showed potencies just suitable for that universe. Had the visitors from Vaikuntha not made themselves appear smaller in size and form to the inhabitants of the universe they were visiting, those un inhabitants would not receive them with the respect deserved by representatives of Lord Narayana. Text 90 and 91 Sri Ganesh continued, These persons cherish only devotional service to the Lord. They travel as they please, spreading pure devotion everywhere. They save the Lord's devotees from all fears, even at the time of death. If those devotees have but once had even a reflection of the Lord's name on the tip of their tongues or the path to their ears. Holy Krishna! i got to read this one again. This is too much. Sri Ganesh continued, These persons cherish only devotional service to the Lord. They travel as they please, spreading pure devotion everywhere. They save the Lord's devotees from all fears, even at the time of death. If those devotees have but once had even a reflection of the Lord's name on the tip of their tongues or the path to their ears. Commentary Here Sri Ganesh explains why the messengers of Vaikuntha visit all the universes. Acting on their own initiative, they travel everywhere to spread devotional service to the Supreme Lord, eager to distribute fearlessness to the devotees, to the Lord's devotees. Even though Vaishnavas have nothing to fear from anything material, they still fear obstructions to their bhakti. The Vaikuntha Vasis always endeavor to help Vaishnavas everywhere overcome impediments to devotional progress. They protect anyone who has at least once chanted or heard the holy name of Lord Vishnu, or even the, a shadow of his name, uttered neglectfully, <clears throat> or in jest, contempt, or pain. Hare Krishna. Text 92 And these four brothers, the best 
of lifelong long celibates are the Supreme Lord's incarnation as its devotees. They wander for the benefit of all the worlds, just like the Lord's Vaikuntha associates. Text 93 They live on Tapoloka, where they give reassurance and security to the residents, who at times feel helpless in the absence of their Lord, Narayana. Commentary Gopakumar might wonder why the self-contented Kumara sages had accompanied the benevolent visitors from Vaikuntha. To answer this doubt, Sri Ganesh speaks texts 92 through 95. The messengers of Vaikuntha are servants of Lord Vaikuntha Nath, and the four Kumaras are empowered Shakyavesh avatars of the same Lord. By personal example, therefore, the Kumaras promote the cause of Lord Narayana's devotional service wherever they go. They spend most of their time on Tapaloka because the celibate masters of yoga who reside there depend on their guidance. The Kumaras teach them the paths of yoga and also create for them the highest good fortune by speaking about the Supreme Lord and engaging them in congregational chanting of His glories. As expressed in this verse by the word Eva, when Lord Vishnu was absent from Tapoloka, the residents suffer as if they have lost contact with Him, but in their meditation they always see Him. And I'm going to stop here. It's after 8, 8.05. A little late, but it's okay. Please, O oh dear devotees, grace me with some reflections, comments, and discussion. Sudevi Dasi. Hare Krishna Sudevi. Hare Krishna Dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances of glories to Srila Prabhupada. Ready for more mind blowing nectar. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just beginning. <laughs> That's from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Dear Maharaj and all friends of grace to you. Hare Krishna Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Dear Maharaj for blessing us daily with these transcendental readings of Sri Brihad Bhagavatamrita. Thank you again and again Jai Shri Prabhupada. Those who appreciate this topic and the development of the knowledge are blessed. So be blessed. Hare Krishna. From Braj Baba. Hare Krishna Braja. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. To listening to yesterday's reading and learning about the subtle forms of sense enjoyment, it made me think I have to get out of this material world. <laughs> well, this is called active hearing. This is a great uh, revelation that you've just blessed us with. Yes, the result of hearing the glories of the Lord should be the desire to get out of this material world and go back and be with the Lord and His eternal associates where we don't have the conflicts and conflicts of interests and conflicts of desires and everything that all of us have to go through in this material world. Hare Krishna. From Noel Craver, Craver, Craver. Bhakti Noel Craver. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I'm eager to hear what I store, what it is I store for us today. I'm eager to hear what? What is I store for us today? What is? 
I guess uh, maybe he meant you st you stole for us today. I'm not sure. No. You told us today. Store like a store. How do you how do you s, s t o r e? Oh, store. Yeah. Oh, what's in store for us? Yes. Oh, I guess that. Yeah. What's yes. In okay. She's eager to hear what's in store for us. Yes, yeah. that is the purpose of this scripture to make us more and more eager, more and more eager, and we can't wait to hear what's going to happen next. Pure spiritual pleasure. From Noel Craver. Uh, Bhakti Noel. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept Mahabur obeisances. I'm eager to hear what's in store for us today. <laughs> Our guest is Shapapada. I definitely don't want any of those physical characteristics one may obtain by worshipping a demigod. So, is it that Shiva increases our devotion for Lord Krishna, but we, with our knowledge, worship Krishna? as to get rid of the middleman and worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yes. But there are souls who are devotees eternally of Lord Shiva in his abode that is away from the material world. He has an eternal form and an and internal abode as we just heard and his devotees surround him there and they worship Lord Vishnu from there. Mm. This this means that the Lord's creation is unlimited, you know, and the super soul in the material world is in everyone's heart, and is in every atom of the universe, and in the form of time, and therefore knows and um, sanctions uh, the activities and the interactions of the souls so that they get their desires fulfilled. So therefore, not all souls want to go back to Goloka Vrindavan. Some want to go to Lord Shiva. They're eternal servants of Lord Shiva. And that creates an unlimited uh, situation of variety because Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. He, he requires unlimited variety. And he takes pleasure, you know, accepting the worship of Lord Shiva and the, Lord, the, the devotees of Lord Shiva who are, worship, who are being taught by him how to worship Lord Vishnu in his company. Lord Shiva, Lord, that, that, um, that form of Lord Shiva is actually uh, a feature of Lord Vishnu. Sada Shiva. Hare Krishna. One more question. Why is it that all of these demigods are making an appearance now, such as Shiva, Ganesh and Durga? What are we to learn from this? They are eternal associates of Lord Shiva and they travel with him and serve him. That's all. But they're not, they're not exactly demigods. They're different than demigods. The demigods are the empowered uh, jiva souls who are delegated with the different powers to oversee the resources of the material energy, the material nature. They don't have the power to go to Shiva Loka or Vaikuntha Loka. So just like Gopal Kumar is learning about Lord Shiva from Nandishwar by the glance of Lord Shiva, we can understand that these personalities are not ordinary uh, demigods. 
there are forms, even in the spiritual world, who resemble demigods but are not demigods. So while we're in the material world, while we're conditioned souls, we're not recommended to worship demigods at all. Even though Ganesh may be able to help us in, in removing obstacles, uh, when, we Lord, when we worship Lord uh, Krishna directly, or Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu especially, we get our obstacles removed immediately, completely. Hare Krishna. Prajvapa said, I like the statement or realization of small Gopakumara is when compared to the size of the universe. What? Did I, I just switch to you? Oh. I'm, I'm blinded by a Sorry. light. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now wake up. Wake up. Uh, be, be alive. Be awake. And, and do things properly. <laughs> I like the statement or realization how small Gopakumara is when compared to the size of the universe and true glories of Krishna. I need to cultivate such humility. Yes. I was just discussing, was it with Sham Kishore? Was it with you? Yes, this morning. Mm. Humility. Mm. Uh, knowledge begins with humility. And real humility becomes extensive or deep uh, the closer we become to Krishna. The closer, the nearer we become to Krishna, the more we realize His greatness and simultaneously our smallness. And therefore, real humility comes when we, when we realize who we are in relationship with Krishna. Then we become uh, completely open, completely receptive to the knowledge and we can get realizations, just like Gopakumar got this realization, you know, immediately by the mercy of his guru and his mantra, because he's so receptive. This is what's making him so, uh, uh, I don't want to say attractive. Yes, yeah, attractive, but more, you know, all the personalities that he's meeting all around, they're, they're treating him with great love and affection, you know, because of this, opulence of simplicity and humility that he has by nature. Hare Krishna. Knowledge begins with humility. Pride blocks the sound that goes through our ears uh, from going through the mind intelligence into the soul, the heart. And that slows down our progress. Hare Krishna. Birch Baba said also I have to say how indebted we are to Srila Prabhupada for translating the scriptures and giving us the Bhakti Vedanta purpose. What else could we have without him? Then I mean, we are completely lost without him. Go ahead. Then a million obeisances to you, the deliverer of the truth to my ear holes. <laughs> Well, it's my pleasure, Hare Krishna. It's my duty and my pleasure, Hare Krishna. I made a vow a long time ago to do this and nothing but this, so here we are, Hare Krishna. Noel Kweva said, thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, you're welcome. The pleasure is all mine. Gop Gopakanya Devidasi said, in bliss by getting your blessings. Long live the Maharaj health. Praying to Shri Prabhupada and Krishna for your good health always and that you continue to do this service in Samadhi of your old age and bless us, the fallen souls of Kali Yuga. Hare Krishna. Well, Hare Krishna, thank you very much. I'm not growing old very graciously because I have a youthful nature and therefore I tend to move fast and do things quickly and the old body doesn't do that. And therefore, sometimes I just fall over or I do something <laughs> crazy <laughs> by mistake. <laughs> Hare Krishna. But thank you for the, all your lovely uh, reciprocation 
it makes me so happy it gives me reason to live longer and longer and I pray every day to this beautiful altar and all the transcendental personalities here that I at least am able to stay in my body to continue to complete the vow I made to do all of the major works of Prabhupada and hopefully this Priya Bhagavatam and also uh, as audiobooks for the BBT. Hare Krishna. Shri Brihat Bhagavatam Rita Ki Jai Samabeda Bhakta Brinda Ki Jai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo So we'll see you tomorrow night, I hope. Same time, same place, same topics. The creme de la 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 creme Hare Krishna, see you tomorrow night.